And it's May 24th. This is today's live stream for Mobile Reviews 8. I'm Aaron the Hope. I've got here uh, Aiden and Cindy from iFix. And so I'm pretty excited to do this. I've been talking about this uh, live stream for probably five, six weeks. We talked about doing this a couple months ago. And so we are going to talk about um, stuff that you can replace in your iPhone. And a bit of a spoiler, I don't know how much you can actually replace in your iPhone, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, I'm sitting here in uh, iFix. Cindy, Cindy's the owner of iFix, and she repairs a ton of uh, different devices, like iPhones, uh, a bunch of uh, yeah, Samsung products and whatnot. All but the most, All the Androids, but a lot of it is mostly... Uh, I guess iPhone or iPad or iOS devices. So one of the neat things that she talked to me about was the quality of replacement parts. And I came to her shop about two months ago asking if I could replace a iPhone 7 screen. And you said... Well, we do. The iPhone 7, we do. I said that it was a long time coming. We wait until the product definitely is older. Um, a lot of people will go to Apple and have their warranty. Uh, but definitely getting the quality of the parts, you have to wait until the phone has been out and are um, selling you good quality parts, uh, affordable for the client for us to buy them. And I think that's important to know because I'm always kind of bulking at the cost of replacing iPhone screens. It's a little cheaper now with Apple Care, but if you guys watched one of my live streams a couple of months ago, it's actually cheaper for me not to go with Apple Care because I replaced so many iPhone screens. So just to know that that quality needs to be there, right? So just don't go to any sort of repair shop. It's like sixty dollars for a repair screen. You might not be getting a quality product. So you want your phone to work the way you bought it, yeah, and, slower or unreliably. Yeah. And like we spend a lot of money on these devices, yeah. like a stupid amount. Like ten years ago, there wasn't like we wouldn't spend a thousand dollars on a device, right? So. A lot of people ask me, what's the best case for inbox? It's just like, no it's kind of hard for me to say that because it's like, you're going to spend $10 on a $1,000 device. Right? Like, yeah, I don't want to add to it. It doesn't quite make sense to me. So better the quality. We got people watching, but no one's asking questions. It's interesting. Um, I do realize that this is a little earlier, so hopefully that doesn't affect too much. Um, so, on to Aiden. He's the guy who's going to talk to us about replacing stuff um, in the iPhone. So, let's go with... Guys, ask me something about which, what pieces do you want to see replaced. Off the top of my head, I want to know if you can replace the camera. Right, I've got an iPhone 7 Plus here. Is there a way I can replace the optics in my iPhone? Well, I mean, yeah, you can pretty much replace... Upgraded or not, probably better. Um, really, they make one camera for six and one. Being able to make up, you know, uh, get a better image out of changing the camera out is probably not. a lot of the components of the iPhone are designed at iPhone. So unless you have some market in upgrade parts, no one's going to release a better camera for. So, can you replace it? Absolutely. Will it make it better? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Might be looking at a uh, bolt on. I mentioned earlier, talking about some kind of cases that come with the yeah. camera. Something like that would probably be better for trying to upgrade the quality of your camera rather than going internal. So, okay. It doesn't work, it can be replaced, but. <laughs> right. So, is there a way, say, like the screen quality? Could Six and the sevens, the guys a little higher. Yeah, I mean they kind of step it up through every the iPhone. It, you know that much better the the guy of the screen. Is. Also with that three D touch thing, I'm a bit of an Android guy, but um, you know it was a it was a pretty big thing. Yeah, the Apple users really do like it. so that combination with a screen. So could you, just from my understanding, take the screens up? Glass portion, CD. Yeah. Is there a way to take for iPhone 7 higher quality screen? Let's relax. Okay. Connection to 
in in I mean in theory, yeah, you could do it, but there's no aftermarket parts available. You know, you can't go on eBay and type in better digitizer, better glass for my iPhone, um, and split them apart for repair. Not really. Yeah. 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 Well, absolutely, but I mean that comes with problems as well. Someone house isn't really going to be able to separate uh, uh, the digitizer LCD and glass on an iPhone screen inside of their house. Do I they, can't do that with the hair dryer. You can get it. Well, you can get it. You can get it apart. We'll fix what happens after you do that. Hey, well, exactly. I mean, you can get it apart, but the chance of you being able to get it back together, you need an uh, an autoclave. I don't know. Essentially, a big oven. Um, a vacuum chamber, and you would essentially sit, slip your screen in there with a, a product called Oka Glue with optical adhesive. Um, it cures in in there, and I mean, that's not really something you have in your, you know, special in, machinery in, in your living room. Yeah, absolutely. Do need a lot more equipment to be able to do that. And I mean, Apple and Android, they're also different as far as how you assemble the digitizers. Something like that you can do a Samsung in your house. For the most part, well, it's not going to be perfect. Um, you can use what they would use. Uh, what's the box? Oh, uh, no, you mean the UV lamp? Well, yeah, there's a term for the nails. But yeah, you essentially use a UV lamp to clear, uh, cure the Oka glue. Use the name. Oh, Oka and Loka. Yeah. Oka and Loka, yeah. So, but I mean, you can do that in your house with an Apple device. Yeah, it can't really. You can try. That's where you see the uh, your three dollar screen. That's what happens. Oh yeah. Well, you're you get just those, getting like, kinda, just clap. You're just given clap. a sheet of glass, and you do not have the equipment at your it's house to do it that. It really is the part that you ordered, but it's a scam. Yeah. So and can. we get that every once in a while. People come in, they're like, "I bought a part. It wasn't the right part." Can you put it in? <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't try. <laughs> with, well, with Samsung's again. With Samsung's, you kind of can. You know? We do far more just glass replacements on Samsung's than on Yeah, I guess that was a question was, uh, what, it's Andy1031 asked what iPhone or Android screen has replaced the most? Oh, well there's a different question there. What iPhone and what Android would be two separate answers? Well, I think you might be either asking A, which one is more popular, or B, which one. I mean, we get more iPhones in, um, you know, Canada and Alberta strictly because there's more people out there with iPhones, mm -hmm. not necessarily because there's more of them or they break more, right. you know, it's just because there's more of them. So, okay. It's usually um, a couple behind what's out now or one behind. Like we, yeah. we replace the 6S um, and the 6s more than any other iPhone. And for the Samsung, the, 6, the S6 Edge, we're starting to get a lot of calls for the 7s mm -hmm. and the 8s and the 8 Edges we're not even doing yet because they're too yeah. they're too expensive to even buy a part for it. Well, you usually get a phone call within, you know, the first week or so of a phone being released yeah. for a broken screen. I just spilled coffee on it. Uh, exactly. And, you know, the problem at that point is the affordability of actually repairing it. You know, it's going to cost a lot of money initially up front for a, replacing a screen on a brand new phone. That's mm -hmm. just how it is, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah, like I... I couldn't for the iPhone Seven. It was it would have been the one I broke or sent to me was locked to AT and T, and I broke the screen. Nobody would do anything with it. Not a lot of people. If it's new, not a lot of people can, can do it. Yeah. You know, like what I guess iFix does that stands apart from a lot of the other businesses is we have experience in across all these different types. You know, so when we worked on a, hundreds and hundreds of iPhone sixes, when they released the Seven, it's really not that much different. You know? got its little quirks a little bit and and you know with some good research you can pretty much learn how to do it we yeah, still you know, when the but, new phone comes out it only goes to senior techs for a while well, absolutely, because if yeah. they break it i'm buying the client in <laughs> it's expensive if you break it yeah it's not my not, I don't, I don't no it's not that it's so much harder it's just that the replacement value is that much more yeah, yeah. so Car carson morgan asks can you replace the front camera so yeah absolutely. no well, yeah, yeah. you can change it you can't i can't really upgrade it any, can't upgrade it, but can be replaced. Can be. Everything, even some of the chips on the motherboards, every part is replaceable exactly, yeah. on the phone. Uh, there, well, yeah, I mean, I guess there's some phones, some of the older Androids, it was almost impossible to get the USB port because they were connected to the motherboard. But even there, it's just if you have a good micro solder tech, yeah, you can get it, it, but it's not necessarily a replacement. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, with Apple devices, Apple was really good about designing a product that was really easily repaired as far as 
being able to change out a lot of the components, charging ports, buttons, cameras, both front and rear, Wi-Fi ribbons, all these things are kind of on the housing. When you get into Android, a lot of this stuff is incorporated right onto the board, the proximity sensor. So mm. the repairability itself for, you know, Joe, random person out there. And you pointed to the other tech that's standing. No, no, no. I was, <laughs> I was gesturing out the door <laughs> to some of this. No, no, no. We'll teach him out of here. We'll teach him out of here. But no, for like even, even most repair shops can't do that kind of repair because it requires a type of skill that you just can't pick up by doing phone screens all day long. Surface mount soldering, it's easy and difficult at the same time. So is, so I guess let's get to the main question is what parts of the iPhone can you actually upgrade? So from what I'm listening just to you guys is you guys can, we can replace pretty much anything on the, uh, in, inside the devices, but what can you upgrade? That main memory chip, I mean, you, you go into Apple and you buy this brand new 16 gig iPhone 6 or iPhone 7 or whatever. And you start to realize really quickly that, talks about that. Yeah, that eight gigs of your uh, chip is taken up by operating system. You know, so the main thing that I've seen done a lot is, is that, that main memory chip upgrading from a 16 all the way up to 120 odd gigs, I think. But it has to be, again, you know, something that is manufactured by Apple. So I don't think there's, uh, unlike a iPod Classic, for example, there's people making aftermarket monster drives for them. Right. You know? mm -hmm. um, with iPhones, you, you get pretty much what was released with a standard phone. And you can go from 16 up to 128 um, without losing any of your memory as well. How much would an upgrade like that run? If we did it, because I don't, we don't do that. We don't well, really do that. no one in Calgary really does that, as far as I know. No one really does that around here. Um, from what I've seen in USD, it's probably around sixty to eighty bucks. It has to be less than um, selling your phone and you know going to get the higher memory. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and I mean, it's it's it seems like it was under a hundred dollars or somewhere around there. And yeah. as far as it, it looks, pretty easy. You know, yeah. Oh, you, you showed me. Yeah, I got one here that I actually pulled the main chip off of. This is pretty cool. So, yeah, I don't know what camera you want to see it, but um, this is a really, really small, this is the main memory chip right here. So essentially there's all these kind of tracers on the back and you just use a surface mob solder to remove it from the center of the board there. Um, they would take this chip out, uh, memory and everything, serial number, IMEI, they put it into a little machine that essentially backs up that information. Put in the new chip into that machine, it sucks that information out, puts it on the chip, and then you reinstall that back onto the phone, into the client's phone, and away you go, upgraded. But how memory. long would that take? I was seeing them doing about 40 or 50 a day. 40. Now keep in mind this is streamlined this is, and all they're doing is someone's removing and someone's reattaching. And this is in China with someone that has a huge education in surface mount soldering and everything. From a very young age, I guess. <laughs> well, and, yeah, I, they're like <laughs> sixteen years old doing these surface mount soldering, but it does. Like tiny hand. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> this is part of the part of working on small phones. But I mean, yeah, like it's the young guys that are doing it. They're doing it really quickly. So, and it seems like it's worth it. It's just not in really in North America that popular as of yet. I had a question I just totally forgot. Um, oh, how many a day? It was how many a day? Oh, so I'll take a bunch of photos of that chip and I'll post them up onto Instagram just so that you guys have a clear idea. Um, how long did it take you to take that entire iPhone apart? Because I, I think the frame and mm -hmm. were... Yeah, no, I have... You know, for a guy like myself, removing the board on this thing took about five minutes. Um, getting the covers off of the board was a bit of a pain in the butt. But how many phones do you think you've taken apart in your life? Like, and as long as you've been here. So the five minutes is because you've been doing this, I'm, you know, yeah, probably, four or five days a week for years. Probably in the tens of thousands of phones, maybe. Wow. At one point I was doing like 12 or 13 phones a day, five days a week at, at Eau Claire. They'd stick me yeah. in a corner and just yeah. throw repairs okay. at me and I would just crank them up as fast as I could. So. But yeah, I mean, it might take someone that doesn't know how to do it an hour to strip these things out, but it, I know what screws to take out and not to take out. So getting the board out took about five or um, getting the covers off of all the main chips. And I guess we'll talk about that a little bit later, but that in itself took about 20 minutes just because I had to separate the, there's a whole covers and metal covers and stuff that go on them. So 
It's a dash. Well, it's water damage. It's water damage. No, 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 it's a client's hand. It's a client's hand. It's going to pick this up in ten minutes. Charging. But no, yeah, it's water damage. You can see there's um, what they call water markers. It's actually litmus paper that's on these. Um, and when they're exposed to water, a lot of people get mixed up. Alcohol does not change the color on these things. So despite what some say. Um, so if it's red, it's water damage. It's water really damage. red. We get some pink, like you can get the pink light water pink. damage yeah. from humidity. humidity. Yeah. So alcohol doesn't? Alcohol will not turn these colors. It will still damage. The alcohol will remove the litmus paper altogether. Oh, okay. It won't. The, the idea with it is so that you can take it into Apple. And when you're so trying yeah, to that's for phone, somebody no. that wants to pretend that um, it wasn't water damage. They think right. that they'll take the pink or red marks off with alcohol. But once it's already changed, they would have to just buy new litmus paper, get it off without Apple being able to see that they got it off and get the new. And people have asked us to do that. People have come in. We don't. Yeah. People have come in and will say, can you make my phone not look like it's water damage so I can take it back to Apple and get it free yeah. under warranty? I want a new phone. And we're like, we can't do that. Yeah, that's not the kind of business we do yeah. here. You know, like, and when I see, because all of the iPhones have litmus paper in the same spot mm-hmm. on all of them. So a big... Uh, you know, stand out for me is when there's no litmus paper there. People have done it to us too, because we have our own warranty, and they want to say that you know it's just not working right, and we can see they put it on, or sometimes the litmus paper looks totally different. I've seen like little letters or words on it, or it's not put back in the same place. Yeah, those are the warranty pads that they put over, which we should start doing get over the screw. And we so should. if you if you break that, you know that it was, it was void, but. How about batteries? Can you guys put bigger and better batteries? That is a good question. There are some. I don't buy them. I, I don't like to mess around with that, but I do. they do sell some better batteries. They have that, those gold-plated iPhone 6 batteries. Yes. Yeah. Miriam G asked this question. It's a, I don't, personally, it's scary messing with these yeah. batteries in your phone. I mean, and I Apple. would much rather invest in an external power source. And they're Sony batteries, right? Like Apple themselves don't make their own batteries. They, they make, this is a yeah. Toshiba chip, by the way. Right, yeah, exactly. Apple so people think to say, yeah, <laughs> they're saying, is it all Apple? It's like, well, we, we wouldn't buy an Apple battery. Yeah, Apple exactly. Batteries. Um, but uh, you can, it's another thing I don't, but yeah, you definitely can on some phones get a better battery. It's supposed to potentially burn out your phone and have a lot of risks and they'd come to us. So I just recommend people trying to do that themselves at their mm-hmm. own risk. And the battery is probably the easiest thing to do in an iPhone. Mm. If you get past... Especially most of the Androids and Blackberries, we just flip off the black. Yeah, I mean, Androids aside, even with Apple devices, you know, you can still change out the battery, but there's still risk. And if you pull on something improperly, especially around that battery, there's a lot of stuff that you can mm-hmm. accidentally break off and your phone is just... So let's talk about the other chips. Yeah, one's in the bottom. Yeah. So from my understanding, the only one is the memory. Uh, well, I mean, that's the that's, this is the only one that would be uh, you could upgrade. So okay. you know you can go in and change a Replace. lot of these other ones for uh, repair purposes. Like your Bluetooth start, stops working in your car or mm-hmm. wherever you use the Bluetooth. Yeah. Um, you um, the three G chip. You know where you're getting your internet connection. The Wi Fi. There's a chip. And a ribbon that you can replace. Sometimes you can replace the ribbon and it works, and then you go down to the chip level. But as far as like upgrading the Wi Fi chip to get better Wi Fi? Except if the Wi Fi is just crappy, you'll get as good as you bought at Wi Fi, which is better Wi Fi than you have right now. So yeah, so the, the upgradability on pretty much anything but this one chip isn't really there. It's really repairable, but to make it better, you're still going to that external, whatever it is, a battery pack or. <laughs> Maybe if a company is offering something that's supposed to give you better Wi-Fi. Um, Agata is asking if the if any of the iPhone elements are upgraded, would the iPhone Seven no longer be waterproof? You, I guess you, you got to be careful with that term waterproof. You got to be really, really careful with that. Like okay. to say resistant. Yeah, resistant, resistant. and waterproof. <laughs> I've said this before. <laughs> yes. So a lot of people or a lot of the companies are releasing water-resistant phones now. That's like you, you splash a little water on your phone, or if you're lucky, it goes for a quick dunk and you pull it out and it'll be okay. But that... even And then even when we open it up, we don't... But yeah. Well, yeah. And I mean, if it hits the water and it's in there for long enough, it's going to go through this waterproof 
it's like a gasket that goes around the screen some mild you're still talking about your buttons are still going to be exposed to that yeah, water it's... your charging ports still going to be exposed to that water the mic the uh, speaker on the bottom all of these components even though the phone is waterproof is still going to get exposed and it's because of the waterproof proof, really amazing adhesive some of those companies are using in their phone um, but something can get to those adhesives they're just better adhesives, but it still can... again going back to that external bolt-on stuff i've heard a lot of good stuff about you know life proof cases yes. water box apparently makes a life proof version really expensive only good for a certain yeah, amount of opens i don't know if you ever heard that before yeah yeah you're i've right. broken enough <laughs> but i mean that's gonna be your underwater you know, picture taken type yeah. thing i i would not trust the waterproofing on a factory phone well and it's it's rated to ip67 and all those rating systems it's just they do the test, in fact, or laboratory settings. Right? So very, it's like, very controlled. Yeah, right. you know, bucket oh, yeah. of water, and they yeah, just kind of... running in the rain <laughs> yeah, toward yeah. the bus. Place it in there. Every so <laughs> Drop it three times in yeah. a puddle. <laughs> no, we get people that come in here, and they're, 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 they're either, yeah, either hit the water for a second, or it went swimming for four And the snow. Hours. Don't forget the snow. I mean, we're in Calgary, yeah, right? So it's the snow in yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I wouldn't trust it too much. It's going to be good for a little bit, but that factory waterproofing, unless... Um, uh, have you ever cat phone? A cat phone? Cat phone. Cat makes a really, really nice. I mean, these are like cat five cat, like like the skid steer. Yeah, whatever. they're really expensive, but they're water. Like I would trust that on water. Yeah. Um, is it the Samsung? What does the Telus guys use? Uh, rugby. Rugby is actually supposed to be another okay. kind of water, water resistant, waterproof phone. So, yeah. um, so Andy ten thirty one is asking: Is is the aluminum case of the iPhone replaceable if it gets dented? Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I said you get different colored ones. Yes. That's one yes, thing that's that is customizable, and and we yeah definitely we, we used yes. to for the older models we we'd have every color under the sun. Sit, well, especially with the iPhone six. I mean, if you got tight pants and it's in your back pocket and you bend over. That sucker's been you know, so. For the colored ones? Uh, no, like the six and the seven. Oh, just, just the ones you buy, yeah. yeah, just that yeah. They, we do it often, yeah. What I found is the housings, yeah. usually you can get really, really good quality housings that bolt up really nicely because there's a lot of components that go from the old housing into the new ones. A lot of your ribbons are connected to that, that back housing, right? So um, the back yeah, houses are really good. The like screens, it. on the other hand, it's really difficult to get colored custom screens for iPhones that are good. So instead you get like a colored glass screen protector on top to look cool. Rather than trying to go, yeah. just I would say just because of the quality of the parts that are coming out mm -hmm. as far as the screen goes. Housings have been great. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know, you're the one that buys the parts, so I just do the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all your fault. Um, Ryan Oswald is asking, is the glass over the rear lens of an iPhone 7 replaceable if it's chipped or scratched? So just the lens and it's a much cheaper repair and we do that all the time. On the Samsungs, it's one of our biggest repairs actually, just the lens. Because they poke out. And um, they used to not be on the iPhone, but since the 6, um, I think it is, just um, we just do the lens replacement, yeah. For the with the 5 and 5S. Do you guys replace it with the same sapphire lens? Or? Yeah, I mean, there you go on the first, you know, few weeks the phone is out, I can't find the proper lens. And as it gets, and it's too expensive, as it gets um, more of an older phone, you're getting the same quality parts. Um, next, Brothersville 85, butchered this guy's name. Is Touch ID replaceable? Really good question. Um, okay, so really, this, really good question. This is about, and I don't know if Cindy knows about this too. I have heard from customers that have come in that if you have a factory iPhone and a factory iPhone and one thumb scanner doesn't work and the other one does, you can actually transfer the factory one over and it should work. But if the serial numbers are close enough the same, it's yeah, by batch. That's, I think, the only yeah, problem okay. why we can't. serial numbers are close enough. Well, well I mean, the batch sense. is made around the same time or the IMEIs, whatever, but it's, oh, yeah. it's serial I'm, numbers I'm not big. surprised. I haven't heard that exact thing because I don't even believe it. But I, I think it was, that it was you can have clients, similar, so, you can have, yeah. client, yeah. you can have Who wanted a thumb scanner repair, mind you. I was saying, you can do it. Uh, <laughs> this is what's happening. We can replace the Touch ID and your home button will work uh, the way it should, but we can't get that scanner to work because the uh, Touch ID home buttons, it's one piece that we're getting, uh, are too different from the phones that we have. So you can still use your home button, but not have the Touch ID scanner. What he's saying is, yeah, I think if we got similar, uh, they make it kind of, I mean, because they don't make it per phone. Like it's not, it must be per well, batch no, of they, phones. They that code, 
my understanding they is they code it, it for, at Apple. But, but so they code it for a bunch of phones coming off coming off the line. Like I, instead of no, thumb scanners are scary, said. man. Because I think yeah. the way that the six works is it's actually storing that thumbprint on the chip inside of the actual thumb scanner, not on the board. So I think when you're trying to swap it over, it has to go through Apple for security reasons because I might be able to take your home button off, stick it in another phone and, or take my thumb scanner off for that matter, stick it in your phone and access your phone with my thumb. So I'm pretty sure I've that's, that yeah. So then why would that, you'd be able to take one, that even that, like you're saying, one from one five S to another? I'm pretty sure because it was coded by Apple. I, you know, the guy was in here for a thumb scanner repair yeah. and was, oh, I can do it. You know, yeah, like, it might have been you get a lot of those customers who can do everything. So, and I mean, more power to them if they can do it, then great. But at this point, you know, as far as we know, it's only Apple that can actually replace the thumb scanner and have it work. Yeah, I don't even use my thumb scanner, it's too annoying. I love my thumb scanner, it's on everything. Uh, how about the Apple symbol lighting up? Like you see, I've seen a bunch of those mods. Yeah. Now we what is, do what is that exactly? Like what are just a tiny, tiny LED in a custom back plate, um, and uh, we only had them for the f the four and the four S. The four and the four S. Yet, okay, no. because of the glass backs. Uh, I think probably because the design, they can cut out the Apple symbol in a glass oh, pack. Physically removed. Yeah. Exactly. Well, so you have a sheet of glass, and then you have on the inside of it is the is the paint, mm -hmm. right? So what they would do is remove the Apple symbol paint and then put an LED pad over top of it. I think I even And it would get enough that. power from the board. There was, yeah. yeah, so you would patch it into, um, I mean, at that time we were doing random capacitors on the board, but you can patch it right into the battery. And the second that you boot your phone, the Apple symbol lights up. It kills your battery though, like murders your battery. Yeah. So yeah. I guess with the iPhone 8, if it's theoretically glass, people you would, I mean, customizability again going back to it not being it. super popular in north america if there was a demand for it we and carry we carried it, it and a lot of, and, and I, I was excited about it and we didn't sell that many people didn't want it i would carry like this long. instead of carrying 30 of them like i did last time i'd carry like one or two <laughs> <laughs> yeah and especially i still have around. them i still have them for the four i'd be willing to give those for free mm. <laughs> Come get them. Take them away. I need one to four. Yeah. Hey, Daddy, we're repairing a four right now. So. Well, yeah, it's still, yeah. it's, people have a four. It's All right. Good. Are the uh, speakers in the iPhones commonly replaced? Oh, yeah, because people get food in them. Like, we, we that's one of the things we'll find uh, people spilling, you know, or dropping into yogurt, and we just replace and the speaker. They're and on then... the bottom, too, especially with the iPhone 6, uh, 5 and 6 in general with a lightning jack. Seems like when you put it in your pocket, that fills up with lint, and then you put your charger in, it packs to the bottom. And, the lint, yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm sure it does the same thing with the speaker. So a surface cleaning is probably the most. We try that thing. first. We try to clean it first. We get a lot. Of so what is a surface cleaning? You just isopropyl alcohol. Well, and also blow it out. Yeah. Why are you taking the iPhone apart? If it's obvious that it's outside stuff, you know, you can remove a lot of it from the outside. If you have to break it open, the problem with getting it open is once you remove the speaker, all that gunk is going to be in between the housing and the mesh so you would have to then take that mesh off clean the mesh and then reinstall the mesh because it's got the over top of the okay. speaker so um as far as replacing it you know you can usually tell right off the bat if it doesn't work probably need it. if it's really quiet i was, I was telling another tech earlier if it's really really quiet technically you can clean it initially. Mm -hmm. okay right so. so for all these upgradable upgradability questions for the iphone could you do the same for similar, like for the Android device, say for like the S7s? It's I just was, different because like you were saying, it's not all replaceable parts. They have most of their, you know, their motherboard is, has most of the components on it, but. And I mean, by design, the Android's galaxies in specific are very difficult to take them apart in one piece. <laughs> you know, like when you take the screen off of an Apple device, it's held in, you know, by pressure and by a couple of screws. It comes out really easy. It's really easy to assemble. You cannot do the same thing on an S6. Like the LCD is adhered to the housing. So if you know if you really, really took your time and you use the proper equipment, you could probably separate it for the purpose of customizing it. But again, you go back to the available. Well, we have parts. two prices on some on our website for a lot of the Samsungs because if they need a USB port replacement, we have to take that screen off. We will say 50% of the time it'll break no matter what care. So your your cost is going to be a brand new screen plus your USB port. Or if we can get it off uh, without breaking your screen, we'll just charge it for the USB port. And people don't understand that. They say, why are you charging me um, for you guys breaking the screen? But it's like no matter what care you take, 
lot of times, like you can't break it. It's like, we'd rather refuse the repair than take the cost of a Samsung screen on our heads. Um, and know, aside from like colored back battery covers, you know, iPhone custom stuff, custom housing and stuff like that are a lot more common than Androids. Mm -hmm. I think maybe because Androids can already come. Just saying. I'm Okay, he needs to be on an iPhone. Who else but you isn't on an iPhone? Are you the only one that... Apparently the only one in North America. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, you no, can customize a lot more stuff on the inside of an Android, so maybe the need to customize the inside isn't as much. Yeah. Whereas yeah. an Apple yeah. device, you can't really do anything. But then you have people device. coming in because they rooted their own phones, and you have to fix it for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can tell okay. by the root. Have you ever... I've never rooted. Never rooted. Never rooted. Don't root. I should I mean all rooting does is give you the power over your device. So some people should not have said power over their device, you know, and that's when they are some people don't that's, want that power. Yeah, and usually it's so that they can, you know, cheat on a game or something like that or load oh, software oh, yeah, that isn't yeah. necessarily like Smurfs, designed. you can pretend if you're playing Smurfs, Clash you can upgrade clans. your I uh, Clash of Clans is the big one and you know, I've actually never made that connection in my head is that you would want to root a device like Get on a mobile game. Mm -hmm. Well, because you could pretend you're uh, back in the future to yeah. do another okay. war or whatever. Yeah. I don't, once I don't you, play that. Once you get into rooting, that's a whole different level of customization. You know? right. I'm not saying everybody roots to cheat on games. A lot of people root because they want a different experience with They're their, programmers. With their They're at-home yeah. programmer. Yeah. yeah, or even writing their own apps and stuff like that. You would need, a, uh, for the most part, a rooted device so that you can load an unauthorized application on your phone without... Samsung or Apple being like, it's bad, you know, because mm -hmm. everything's got to go through a certain steps to get onto your phone per se. So. Uh, a couple more questions. Uh, I think I could probably answer this one. But Nash Tommen is asking how to replace the speaker that is on top of the screen for making phone calls and playing music. Plays music? Uh, okay, so those are two speakers. The one that plays music is on the bottom of your phone, and the one that you're the earpiece speaker, if you're speaking on the phone. Um, so both of those can be replaced. Um, and price wise, like if you guys go to the site, you guys gotta. So, yeah, every single price, price uh, is on the site because, uh, and I, not many people do that. Um, I want, we wanna be an open book. Yeah. So it's not just, oh yeah, for you, $100. Oh, for you, Mr. in a suit, I that'll be $375. That you really got to dig for that price on some websites. Yeah, really or this says call, like, call, call, and then yeah. you call, and then they, and, they, and they even tell you will come in. I don't want people to have to feel like they have to come in to figure out what the price is, make their decision, and then feel, you know, call other places. But mm -hmm. And some people come to us even if we're more expensive because they like that we tell them what the price is. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I mean, the lower speaker, the one that actually plays the music, is definitely replaceable. Um, a lot of times it doesn't work at all. There's a really tinny, tinny sound to it. Typically, that's from playing music too loud and the driver inside of it. I play mine on full blast or something. Yeah. And you would think that that wouldn't be a thing because yeah. Apple would limit it. But yeah, I've heard crackly ones. Earpiece speakers, crackly earpiece speakers are very, very common um, because of the proximity of the magnet to the front of the phone. So let's say you're a welder or a grinder or something like that. Um, and you leave your phone out, that earpiece is going to suck in all of those little shards of metal and stuff like that, create a tinny sound, and then a cleaning or, you know, an adjustment or something like that might be. But yeah, they're definitely, definitely replacements. All right. Um, for this one, is it possible to supercharge Touch ID too slow? doesn't work when my hands are sweaty. Right. So no, because we, we, as we were just explaining, we can't, you know, replace touch ID, but there's, that's one of the reasons I don't use my touch ID. I can't stand that, that my hands are sweaty or dirty, or it just doesn't want to press it three times. Is that that's a just common a user. thing on Apples? Because like I can use my He's touch ID upside down on my Samsung and it seems to work fine. No. Well, you have to set it. I don't know. I don't have, I don't I just, have, I don't I have licked, good, you have good fingerprints. That's I just licked thing. my finger. I just licked my finger. Yeah, but you have good fingerprints. No, it's not working. See? <laughs> Water well, damage. I've been grinding my hands. Water damage. You gotta get an iPhone now. Um, could pay me that. I really, I'm surprised. I'm gonna have to go home and check this. But people are saying the iPhone the top speaker plays music as well. This is the, I've heard. Um, even Amron was saying he's got an Android that has speakers that play forward on it. So yeah, it wouldn't surprise me that on the I, iPhone seven the that 7 it plays it plays on forward. the earpiece speaker. Yeah, and I mean, mentioning the iPhone seven, the home button design is actually different on the seven as well. So, so I have an iPhone seven. And it, I, my, I haven't tried to do anything. Settings is a little switch. Okay, so, oh, so 
I'm learning. Yeah. I just learned something because oh, I have to go check out the settings. It's not doing that right now. I, I wanted to do that. That's super cool. When we're though, done, I'm going to do that. When you're trying to watch a video, your hands always cover in the speaker, and I get it on Samsung. Yeah. You know, kudos for Apple for putting a forward speaker. Cool. Speaker. All right, so that's we're half an hour in. That's cut everything off because it's half an hour. Um, so thank you guys for doing this. You're uh, welcome. Thank awesome you for video. coming. This has been very interesting for me. Um, like I, I fix. You guys got a bunch of stores in town, and like I've gone around to the other stores. And we have a new store um, opening up in the northwest, and I'm not giving away the location yet because it's not. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't even know. I'm just very comfortable talking to them about the parts because they are uh, the open book thing. Like I know, you know, if I was to take my stuff here, I'm getting decent parts. Whereas in the other ones, it's you always have to dig in to figure out exactly what's going on. So yeah. it's pretty awesome. I, I'm a big fan of businesses that okay. um so thank you guys um if you guys have any other questions um leave them in the comment section below and maybe we'll do this again in the uh, next while there's a lot of uh, questions and so, so uh, pull apart an iphone for you guys if you... right in front of you that would be pretty five cool. minutes <laughs> yeah look at how many times maybe we'll do that for the next live stream we'll do a live stream pulling apart of an iphone you guys watch a lot of my videos where I break them. Now you got to actually see. Maybe I'll break them and then bring it to you guys. Figure out. Or you I bring mean, them and I'll break them. I don't get to break iPhone's arm. Run it over with your car. And then we'll Let's see, see how, it. how much money I can spend to repair <laughs> one iPhone. We'll give a little well, bit of Well, in that discount. case. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's getting replaced. All right, guys. Um, thanks for watching. And uh, I got it.